uh, joining me here uh, as he, helping us take us to him and Michael Smith uh, every single day when we're done here on NBC Sports on Peacock at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We hand off the NBC Sports on Peacock channel to brother from another, Michael Holly, joining us once again. How are you, Michael? Rich, I'm doing great. And yes, we'll do it. We'll keep the rotation going. Okay, good. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd love to. And, and to answer your question, yes. how many brothers? We got lots of them, including I was calling him our brother, Chris Sims. Yes. And he had all kinds of jokes saying he was a token white guy. And I was like, come on, Sims. Like, why, 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 we gotta, like, why we gotta go there? You know, like, we love you. We, yes. Who cares? We got different daddies. It, it doesn't <laughs> matter. You all part of the family? Yes. So he had to make that about, you know, he had to make it about race and everything. But I'm going to tell you today. Yes. He's my stepbrother today. He's <laughs> my stepbrother. Chris Sims. He's on He's on your Chris show. Chris Sims. Okay. Is, he used to be. Last week, yes. he was my brother. Uh, at, at, you know, Thanksgiving, at the same table, everything's good. What happened? This week, he's my stepbrother because I don't know what happened to him. Uh, maybe he bumped his head with these You see these quarterback rankings? He came out with. I did not. Uh-oh. Enlighten me. What happened? I just know. I know. I know a good Michigan man. Well, Michigan wasn't smart enough to play him when he was there, but that's okay. Um, I know a good Michigan man, Tom Brady. Yes. Was not in his top ten. Not in his top ten quarterbacks this yeah. year. Like, how, what, what, what's he thinking? Well, I guess. Uh, let me just guess then who he's got up there. So he must have Russ Ryan there. Tannehill. Ta- okay, Tannehill over Brady. Now, now that's fighting words. Deshaun Watson. Well, Deshaun, I, I, I could I could kind of understand that. Really? Yeah, I mean, Tom is 44 years old, right? I mean... Three, 43. I know, 43. I'm rounding up, just trying to help him with his uh, with his uh, <laughs> equation. So that's what you're going to be talking about with Chris? I mean, this is a big game tonight, too, man. This is a huge game tonight. Uh, I'm very excited for, for Kyler v. Uh, Russ this evening for week Who 11. Who you got in this game? You know what? That's a great question. <laughs> I've been going back and forth here. So... Uh, Chris, look it up. When was the last time a Pete Carroll team lost three in a row? When was that last time? I, I don't know when it was, but uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that the the Seahawks don't have um, deficiencies that Arizona can take advantage of. And my concern is Arizona has had trouble closing games, including the win against Seattle, including what we saw against Buffalo, that they just, when they need to pick up a first down late, they haven't. When Kyler Murray needs to pick one up, he's ending up throwing it. And uh, instead of running it and vice versa, they've been out of sync. But I'm 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 leaning towards Arizona tonight. What about you? Uh, yeah, Arizona. I'm going with Arizona too. But you bring up a great point from from Sunday that, that nobody's talking about because of that great finish. Um, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, there in the end zone over three guys. <laughs> he, he usually don't throw in the triple coverage and come away happy about it. But you know, it's DeAndre Hopkins. But on the drive before that. Cliff Kingsbury kind of messed it up. Uh, all he had to do was kind of eat some clock, and they threw. I think they. I think they threw three times to hand it over to Buffalo to allow Josh Allen and Buffalo to go ahead. So if they didn't have that big comeback, that big throw, I think. I think Kingsbury would have been facing some tough questions. But I think they, the catch took took all that away. Yeah, I, I, it is one of those again where um, where. Arizona has been, you know, shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with decision making and then execution towards the end of the game, but they are still six and three. And I don't know. I mean, we've all seen momentum and what a fickle beast it can be, but how 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 you can take it from one game to another, and it's only been four days. Uh, I I I I think I'm going to go with Arizona tonight. I, I think that's where I'm, I think you've helped me talk this one out. I think that's the way I'm going to hey, go. Rich, don't you feel like don't you feel like I know 2020 has been weird in a lot of ways, away from sports. But if I told you last year that we're talking about Arizona in a position to sweep Seattle uh, yep. in, a, in a season series, that the Cleveland Browns came off a big win, and they're 6-3, and three, that Buffalo is leading the AFC East, and they could have been 8-2 and two if not for that last, uh, last second catch. I mean, think about it. Tampa Bay is 7-3. and three. You feel like you're in some kind of alternate reality, don't you? Yeah, I, it is just – it's one of those crazy years, and it's one of those years in which it's an any given Sunday, um, and it's been happening, um, and it's been weird. If I'm not mistaken, Chris, has 
Pete Carroll ever lost three games in a row? Yeah, so the last as, time uh, the Seattle Pete, Seahawks? Yeah, no, they did it in 2011 was the last time. They lost three in a row to Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Dallas. They finished seven and nine that yeah, year. I've got this up right here. The quarterbacks in that game were Tavares Jackson and uh, the quarterback that uh, Jeff Schaefer, the Curb Your Enthusiasm and Seinfeld writer and producer and director, um, would call clipboard Jesus. Charlie Whitehurst was his uh, was the quarterback. <laughs> That was so, a, hey, Rich, wasn't that, that was the year of the big run. That was when they, they, they hosted a playoff game. Everybody was mad about it because they were 7-9. and nine. They played the Saints, and then Marshawn Lynch broke 70 tackles and then uh, had an interesting celebration in the end zone. Actually, it was the year after that, to be honest with you. And it's one of those – Was that the year after? Well, 2010 was the year in which they, they beat the defending champion New Orleans Saints yeah. in that game, and that was the Beastquake. The year after they lost or, three in a row. Right, after the it's, – yeah. it's kind of – yeah, that was 2010, year before they lost three in a row. And I remember being uh, in Seattle uh, all those years ago before Russell Wilson showed up, and we were asking Pete Carroll after the game, as we were being showered by Skittles, by the way, in the corner uh, on our NFL <laughs> Network set – was asking, who, who, yeah. you know, what's the identity of this team? Because this was pre-Legion of Boom and pre-Russell Wilson. And we're wondering, like, Pete was the identity, and so was Marshawn Lynch, and then we all know the, kind of the, the rest is history. I've got Michael Holly here. We'll take him to brother from another. What is your uh, – I don't want to steal too much of whatever you're talking about, but, I, you know, the Clay Thompson news is significant. I wonder what you think of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough because I was – you know, Michael Smith asked me yesterday – when we didn't know the news and, and going into the draft, he said, okay, what, what team are you most intrigued by? And I think he said the Hawks, the, you know, because they already got some young talent, number six pick, what would the Hawks do? And I said, Golden State, because if you have Clay Thompson coming back and you got Curry coming back, you still got Draymond, you got the second pick in the draft. I'm just intrigued. And see how Andrew Wiggins plays with those guys. I was just intrigued by Golden State because I thought they'd be right back in the championship conversation. But uh, Clay Thompson missing another season, second season in a row. It's just going to be tough. I mean, the West is the West is loaded anyway. I just don't think they have enough uh, without Clay Thompson to be back in that conversation. So, yeah, that's devastating. That's a big one uh, for us. And we're also, you know, this is a, we talk about some serious, serious issues on uh, brother from another like. Uh, Michael B. Jordan's best movies, ranking them. You know, that's coming up. So, and that's, that's based on his selection of Sexiest Man Alive. That's what you're saying. Sexiest Man Alive. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, of course, if John Legend actually relinquishes that title, he might actually be holding out and trying to sue to keep his title. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I, you know, I got to go might... with, I got to go with, you know, I, I got to go with uh, Michael B. Jordan on okay. that one. Oh, I don't know. All right. Very good. <laughs> and the answer is Creed, See, Michael. More, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, like, listen, I, yes. I'm not the one to, to, to say what, what women are looking for. Uh, clearly, I've, TJ knows I've struggled with that most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was able to con a woman into marrying me. Okay. You all punted your coverage, don't, man. Don't, don't, uh, yeah, definitely. Don't tell her, though. Don't tell her. So Michael B. Jordan, um, his best movie is Fruitvale Station. I mean, that's to be honest with you. Oh, I, I was oh, that's under, oh, that's in my top five, Rich. Oh, I like that. That's a good... Rich Eisen oh, yeah. is officially a brother from another. Oh, no. <laughs> hey! Michael, let me tell you a quick story. Yes. Let my me, G. Let me just tell you a quick story, Michael, okay? And then uh, we'll send you to your, your coverage. Uh, the oh, do I have to? I, the, I like hanging out with you guys. Oh, uh, it's all good. Okay. No, no, I, no. Show. I think I am contractually mandated to hand off the show at the top of the hour. Um, this was the uh, All Star Game in New York City, uh, the one that was featured in the Last Dance because it was Kobe Bryant's with Michael Jordan, and um, I did Sports Center with Stuart Scott, and we were coming down on Saturday night after. Um, doing a Sports Center, he wasn't too thrilled about doing that Sports Center Saturday night because he wanted to be in New York City for this big, huge All-Star game. So anyway, we're, 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 we're driving down, uh, and we go to uh, Times Square, uh, where the old All-Star Cafe, if you remember yes. that, with Tiger and, yes. uh, and Shaq and Ken Griffey and what Gretzky had their yep, restaurant right. or whatever, like a sports version of Planet Hollywood. Um, it was around 1.30 in the morning, and everyone was streaming out of uh, the All-Star Cafe uh, because the party that, Mike, uh, that Stuart wanted to go to had just ended. Stewart gets out of the car, and he's like, I'm going to ask this cop where the next party is. I'm like, what are you doing? Literally got out of the, at Times Square, car's running, got out of the car, asked the police officer where the next party is, got back in and said, I got the information. 
let's get out of the car because we were, you know, Stuart had a uh, we, we had a service drive us down. Got out of the car, okay, and started walking west towards the um, uh, Lincoln Tunnel. And I grew up in New York City. I'd not really spent much time in that part of the neighborhood. Uh, I was literally the only white guy on the street at that point in time. <laughs> Stuart Scott, it was like Elvis had entered the building, and everybody started flocking around him, telling him how much they loved him. And then one guy looked at me and goes, hey, the white guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, white guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Michael? I've been the white guy for a long time, no matter what you're saying. Okay. Hey, Michael, Rich enjoyed? is definitely invited to the, the barbecue, man. Oh, yeah, he's in. <laughs> A.K.A. Oh, yeah, the yeah, black yeah. Rich Eisen. That's what Shaq himself said back in the day. Okay, I'll take that. Rich okay. Eisen is at the barbecue, I'll sitting take at the table, just chilling. <laughs> just chilling. Michael, you have a good Domino's? show. Yes. How about Domino's? You play Domino's? Um, I've had Domino's. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, well, no, okay. Back when I went to school in Michigan, you're there. Ann Arbor. You're there. We love you. You're there. Don't worry about Thank it. You. We, we'll take care of all the other stuff. Thank just, you, Michael. You, you take care. We'll you see you soon. You cleared the big hurdle. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, have a great show with Michael Smith. I enjoy our chats Appreciate on Thursdays it. and tell Michael I said hi. There you go. I just want to make sure. All right, all right TJ. Later, uh, brother. By the way, TJ, Cowboys, Cowboys, two wins. Ha ha. There you go. That's a Ignorance. mic drop. Ignorance. That's right kind there. of a Jewish goodbye with a brother from another. He great. says I'm an honorary member. He didn't want to leave, Mike. He is too. He didn't want to leave. I love that. <laughs> that. That was unnecessary at the end, though. He didn't have to slip that in there.